Stars in Los Angeles, California, a Virginia Tech grad with a knowledge of recording studios unmatched in his field. He's a voice actor from Buffalo, New York, with 30 years experience in recording studios and behind the mic. He solves people's home voiceover studio problems in the blink of an eye. Together, there's no studio problem they can't solve, and they'll do it for you tonight. Welcome to East West Audio Body Shop. Now, live from a basement in Buffalo and an office in L.A., here are Dan Leonard and George Whittem. And good evening. Welcome to East West Audio Body Shop. I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East, East West, West Audio, Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. Well, you've made it to another Sunday. Again, what else were you going to do tonight? <laughs> uh, you know, unless you're watching Sunday Night Football or something like that. But you should be watching us because we're far more informative. And we've got great stuff to talk about, right? Yeah, and we're less smelly. And we don't touch each other's butts nearly as much as they do on football games. This is true. Well, we don't know how smelly I am. You know, <laughs> you know, we are sort of rushed in here tonight, and uh, who knows? I we went for a long bike ride tonight, and you know, the wife's like, "Let's all go for a family bike ride." That's great. And let's let's go. Let's go over to this new ice cream parlor. Well, this ice cream parlor that opened in Buffalo in September, uh huh, gone after a month. We're talking major league fail. Oh no! Yeah, month and a half gone. You know, Whoa! So. That's a that's a quick turnaround. It was, yeah. Well, it wasn't a good idea. I'm like, why on earth would they be opening up an ice cream parlor in September? <laughs> That's bad timing. And it was like uh, this, 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 this has this has failure written all over it, and oh, and it was. We got a little L.A. taste of L.A. today. Yeah. I, uh, we were just walking around. I was entertaining Ella this morning while Amy got her, uh, you know, mommy time, and mm -hmm. uh, we decided to hop on the bus because it pulled up to the bus stop right by our house. So we jumped on, jumped off at the Third Street Promenade. We saw some great music, stood there and watched this uh, artist play for a while. And I'm shooting video of Ella dancing with some other girls. And all of a sudden I realized there's lots of, there's like a TV camera there and a production crew there. And I'm like, what's going on? All of a sudden, who walks right in front of my camera, but Carson Daly. Oh. And he walks right up to the the girl performing, gives her a uh, the voice uh, card and saying, you're going to be, uh, you know, you're, you've just basically gotten an audition on the voice. And it mm. happened all, you know, kind of like right in front of our eyes. And it was, it was pretty neat to watch. It was, you know, it was just, we're in LA, you know, these things happen here. And it was just fun. You know, it was fun for everybody. And it was, a, she, she was shocked. And so, uh, that was a lot of fun. I even had to sign a release for Ella. <laughs> so wow. She may be on the, you know, oh, maybe yeah. a little clip of her dancing around with the other kids. So, uh, yeah. well, maybe she, maybe she has a future in there. Add to the family income. Well, I'd like her to do voiceover and maybe some print work. I don't know about the uh, on camera. Yeah, well, she, she's she's done plenty of voice work with us so far. So. No kidding. <laughs> I think she has a future. That's true. Well, we've got a wonderful show for you tonight. Some great stuff to talk about. But our special guests tonight are Penny Absher and James Allberger from Don San Diego, the founders of Voice, the Voice Over International Creative Experience. Hey, I remembered good. it off the top of my head. I know it's been a year. Darn it. It, it, yeah, it has been. It's been over a year. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be uh, talking about the, the next one coming up in uh, beginning of June, I believe it is, of 2012, which ain't that far away. No. I mean, it's, I mean, you know, school opens and like we're down the hill towards Halloween. It's going to be Thanksgiving before you know it. And, mm -hmm. and suddenly it's going to be 2012. And it's like, well, got to start planning to go to voice <laughs> and all the other great stuff that we do in 2012, which is... Uh, be more successful in our voice careers. Exactly. I got it made. Everything's coming to me this year. Fafcon coming to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, fortunately, it's easy to jump on Southwest and just head on down to Southern California. Go see my mom and see all my voiceover buddies. That's right. <laughs> anyway, as I lose my earpiece, I couldn't hear what you were saying. Okay. Anyway. Yes. What's that? Okay. <laughs> this just in. Um, anyway, we'll be talking with the with uh, Penny and James in just a little while. Stay tuned for that. But we got some interesting questions this week. Mm -hmm. And I think you've got uh, you've got one of the questions there, and we can probably start off with that. I do. We, we got some questions by audio this week, which I thought ah. was kind of cool. So uh, let me cue that up here. I'll add their uh, clip into the queue, and we'll start with, uh, let's start with the very beginning. We'll start with the first one received, which I think came in uh, about two and a half weeks ago, right after we announced the... Uh, Right. Ability to take calls. So here we go with this one. And let's see if we can hear it. 
Hey, I've got a question concerning the care and feeding of studio equipment. Uh, the microphones we use are sensitive pieces of equipment, and while they don't have any lot of, uh, a lot of moving parts, at least that are evident to the eye, I'm wondering if they ever need to be cleaned or adjusted or new capsules installed or whatever. I've never seen anybody address that question. Is there microphone upkeep? Uh, my name is Gary McFadden. I'm in the Dalles, Oregon, and I guess that's it. Thanks. Well, that's a that's a pretty good question. That's one we that haven't had question. yet. That's right. You know, and and the thing is, is you know, in a professional studio, you're going to have what they have a microphone locker. Now you have a microphone locker, right, George? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I, I sort of, ha well, I do have one, but you know, it's like, I only use one mic and well, that's not true either, but you know, mm -hmm. I've, I've got, I got my, my AT2020 USB here that we use for, for, for EWABs, but, um, at one remember, time I had a mic locker. I mean, at one time I had mics in bags and cases and right, that was right. when I used to do a lot of live recording, but, uh, a lot yeah. of the mics are gone now. Yeah. But remember we're, de we're talking about different types of microphones, um, most of us, at least we all should be, are using studio condenser microphones. And studio condenser microphones, as as our caller said, have no moving parts. At least they shouldn't have. And if they do, you really you probably do need need to do some maintenance on them. Uh, but there's there's no magnets in them or anything along those lines. So the only thing that can really accumulate in there is dust, or if you live along the Mississippi, water. Yeah. Uh, so, um, or in, in Iowa or wherever it was, they were having all those floods this year, Minnesota. Uh, so water is probably, probably the worst part. Why, why was water, you know, something that should not be around a microphone? Well, because they're chock full of electronics, first of there all. There you go. <laughs> um, you know, a condenser microphone is full of electronics and the, the condenser, uh, diaphragm is actually called a, a capacitor. Right. Um, and it's basically a very, very, very thin sheet of metal, um, or usually gold. It, yeah. It's plated with, it's plastic plated with metal. And if, if moisture gets in there from anything, uh, even from your own mouth, from just spitting on the mic, which is why we re recommend a pop screen just to protect your mic, if anything, or a sock or something, then, um, you know, that, that can be a very detrimental to the mic. So that would be a good reason to keep it protected at all times, what, either with a pop screen while you're using it, or um, you could put a little, uh, like a little bag over the mic, a baggie or something niftier looking. Right. Yeah. Now, now they used to, now RCA used to have bags and you can still see them on eBay and stuff, you know, protect your microphones with a bag. Right. You know, I think some people have been using like a crown Royal bags and stuff like that. They really like to treat their microphones like royalty <laughs> most of the time. And I, and I was thinking about this today. Now here's an old velocity ribbon microphone. This is a, this is a V one made by Electra voice. And this one still works by the way. Um, and you can see it's got two large magnets on it. Actually, it's got a, an, an electro a magnet in the back too. Mm -hmm. One of the things that they wanted to prevent with these old microphones was getting iron filings and stuff in it because it would all stick to the magnets mm. and that we could, you could ruin a microphone very easily that way. So with some of the more expensive ones, uh, you know, they would, the RCA would have these, these bags that you would put on the microphones to store them to keep dust of course out, but any metal that would get, you know, inside there and could really mess up a microphone if you, if you have way too much of it. So yeah. that's one of the things, but for condenser microphones, really, you know, they don't need a whole lot of maintenance, do they? Not really. I, you know, I, if they're well taken care of, if they're kept, you know, they're not dropped. Um, there's really not a lot of maintenance until they get quite old until right. the parts start to actually degrade or start to, um, and if you have a vintage microphone, sometimes they need to be recapsuled. Um, the diaphragm or, is also called a capsule or re-ribboned or re-ribboned, that kind of thing. Um, we did, I was digging around and I did find a company who's come up with a very clever, uh, microphone dust cover. Um, I just thought it was so cute and so innovative that I had to share it. So I'm going to drag it over the screen here Okay, let's and, take a look. uh, let's see if we can see and hear this. I'm not sure. We'll see what happens here. If this will work. Well, it certainly looks interesting. Do I look okay? Everybody okay? 
Flying, fly, fly, speak English. We love your mics. We save their lives. Beware of imposters. We're the mic monsters. We love your mics like you love your mom. You can find the sad your mics like you love your mom. You can find the sad your mics. <laughs> Wow. Gear Brad. Those are those are mic covers. <laughs> yeah. This Gear Brad company came up with a uh, microphone cover design. You know, it made them look like little monsters. I thought that was, you know, clever. Yeah, it is cute. Cute, clever, silly, and useful. Um, All right. So there you go. There is actually a, a mic dust cover idea. And uh, of course, you could make these yourself. Of course. Or if you're John Taylor's around, you could use an oven mitt. Right, exactly. Yeah. I, th I think John actually should should start a, a line of those of John Taylor oven mitts, you know, Mister <laughs> Voiceover hand and stuff like exactly. that. And so, yeah, we've got go another one. Should we squeeze this one in? Another I question. I suppose. Sure. All right. Let me uh, put the sound in for this one, and let's take a listen to this next question. And here it is. Hi, Dan and George. My name is Jan. First, I'd like to thank you for having the show every week. And I do have a few questions for you. I'm setting up my home studio. I have an SE2200A condenser mic, and I also have a Focusrite Sapphire 6 USB interface. I'm using a PC and Audacity for now. I'm going to be getting my studio monitors next, and I wanted to know your recommendations. And also, what would you recommend for reducing siblings? Thanks for your help. I appreciate it. All right. Excellent questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I think we we've talked about monitors before a little bit. Um, now, uh, what do I use? What do we recommend? Uh, you know, there's always those questions like, "What's your budget?" Right. You know that sort of thing. How much are you willing to spend? It is important. George and I both believe to use studio monitors as opposed to headphones. You should have headphones. So if you're doing an ISDN session or on Source Connect or a phone patch or something along those lines where you need to listen to direction, yeah, you can have headphones. But for monitoring and 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 really for recording, not the best idea. Although there was some controversy on one of the, the forums this week about it, but I'll just mm -hmm. stay away from it. I think it was episode, I'm looking through our show notes, and yeah. which are getting a lot better now thanks to uh, Eric Espinoza. Espinoza, yes. Volunteering to, to give us much better show notes. But I think it was episode 15 where we talked about uh, studio monitors. So I definitely recommend you take a listen or take a watch uh, to that one so you can get right. a lot more detail. Um, right. But as for sibilance. Um, well, we, first we have to tell, we have, we want to explain yeah. what brand perhaps they would like to use. Now, oh. what does the home studio master use? The home studio master uses KRK Rocket 5s. I've had these for about five years. They work great. They're high powered. They're not loud. They're studio monitors. They're designed to be like headphones, only much more powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they're about $149 a piece. They've been able to maintain the price on that at KRK. And they also make some smaller ones. And really, if you're doing voiceover and all you're doing is, you know, single mono tracks, you really only need one. Mm -hmm. But you should have two uh, because then they also make. Nice monitors for your computer too, yeah. uh, but the, what are some other brands? I know Yamaha makes them and There's M so Audio. Yamaha and, M Audio. I like M Audio because they make a nice one called the BX Five A. Right. I rarely recommend studio monitors for just for strictly people that only do voice recording. That costs say more than three hundred dollars. I think over that price, it just starts getting bigger and louder and has more bass extension. All yep. things that we really don't need. But uh, also. Um, Believe it or not, I have a pair of Bose Media Mates or something like that, and normally mm -hmm. I wouldn't recognize any recommend anything from Bose, but I find these speakers to do a remarkable good job for under a hundred dollars. So if you want, and they're about wow. the most compact sized speaker I've found that can still reproduce pretty pretty accurate, full sounding uh, audio. So yeah, you can check those out too. Interesting. All right, now the other question was about sibilance, but we'll get back into that in the ne in the next quarter here. So. Uh, Again, if you've got a question, what's that number, George? You're the one that's supposed to remember this. <laughs> it's 818-47-EWABS. That should be 818-473-9227. Uh, oh, 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 no, no, you can't remember. 9227. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. We're going to go to a break here. And again, we've got... Uh, 
We've got Penny Absher and James Allberger coming up in about 15 minutes, so stay tuned right here on East West Audio Body Shop. We'll be right back with that question about sibilance in just a minute. And we're back here at East West Audio Body Shop. Boy, did I run into some trouble with that particular commercial. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you, ran into the, you ran into a run-in with the copyright law. Yeah, you know, I, I originally wrote that to be with Carmina Barana, mm -hmm. which would have, was perfect for that. But, you know, unfortunately, you know, even, you know, if you use my wife playing it on piano or something along those lines, you know, YouTube picks that up and goes, copyright infringement so we had to change the music on that that's actually a royalty free piece on there yeah that i that i actually purchased ascap bmi or wherever you guys are um good for so, you you should feel you should feel good about that well i mean i picked good music for it so that Me helps too. yeah anyway anyway so the second question that the the, the jan had was about sibilance Sibilance, mm -hmm. sibilance, sibilance. Now, now, now sibilance is an interesting one. Uh, now, there's a lot of ways you can control it. Uh, some people say, "Well, you got to find the right microphone that doesn't give you sibilance." I tend to believe. Now, you you may argue with me, or just discuss it with me. Uh, I tend to think it's more a matter of mic technique, maybe a little bit about the acoustics in the room somewhat but if somebody has a sibilant voice if they have a lot of s's and stuff like that it might help to be a little bit off axis uh one of the things that i've heard that really works well uh because it works well for me not that i have a lot of sibilance in in, in with my voice but uh relaxing seems to help a whole lot mm. and uh if you relax and don't tense up when you're reading and try to really enunciate everything. Sibilance can go away. Uh, generally, now sibilance is where now what frequency range? That's like a you know you know forty. What is it? Four K for for yeah uh, it's a, yeah it's 4K. like four K starting around four K to it can go up to ten or eleven kilohertz in range. Way yes, up now, in the trouble now, range. Yeah, now people are sitting there in our audience going. Their eyes rolling in the back of their head and going 4K. What do we mean by 4K? Yeah, it's basically the range um, where it starts to get. Well, think of symbols. Listen to music when you hear the symbols, the sound of the symbols. Those start coming in around four, take four to five kilohertz, and right. so that range on up is just basically where the treble lies, and that's where the the sibilance lives. So. Uh, it's all those things, just like like Dan said. I mean, it, it's acoustics, it's mic choice, it's technique, it's mic placement. All of these things kind of work together. Um, certainly, there are mics that are less sibilant than others for certain voices, but I tend to, to find that they also may just sound too dull um, because they remove all of the sibilance frequencies and you end up just sort of with a dull sound. Right. Um, it's, it's, I think you're looking for something that has a smooth response, especially for... Uh, a female voice and women's voices are more often sibilant than men, but not always. And so a mic that has a, doesn't have a big presence peak where the re response rises sharply at, at the top range, which a lot of condenser mics do. Um, but we can also dial it out using um, processing. 
Uh, right. do, you ever, do you ever use DSing processing yourself, Dan? Or I, you know, if on somebody else's stuff, because it's it, it's never been a problem for me. Right, uh, but ma- for other know, people. I, I, Right. I, I use a Neumann TLM 103. Sibilance is never a problem with a mic like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's one answer. Buy an expensive microphone. No, don't don't go out and spend a whole lot. You buy a TLM 103 when you earn a TLM 103 because it's not going to make you sound any better unless you're actually, you know, doing well, you know, and making money. And then you can afford to invest in one of those. Um, but a good microphone is going is going to help that. I, I, I will use a DS or another people's stuff. A lot of times I get asked to clean up uh, audio tracks for, for videos and stuff like that. There's a, a bunch of editors that I work with and, uh, and they'll say, can you, can you clean this up? I don't know anything about audio. Mm-hmm. I'm like, uh, ac- actually it's more like, can you clean this up? It's uh, I don't know much about the audio mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, or, or it's in Arabic or something along those lines. Yeah. And, uh, and I'll listen to it and I go, well, there's a lot of, you know, it, <laughs> Okay, there's an electrical buzz in there. We got to fix that. And, uh, you know, how do we get that out? A lot of stuff can be done with EQ. Uh, isolating that one particular frequency that is causing a problem and then sort of highlighting it. And if you're in a sibilant section and taking it out or using EQ in that particular area and, and you know, sliding down that 4K slider just a little bit. Go to, you go to like the 30 band equalizer. You don't use like the, you know, the four band like you used to have in your car. Uh, and, and take down that, not all the way down. You have to, you, what you do is you play it in real time and you slide the EQ for 4K down just a little bit until right. you're, it sounds right without losing you know everything else definition yeah right yeah. exactly i i find i mean i know there are dsers specifically that people use there's one that's popular it's a free one called spitfish i think that's what it's called and <laughs> yeah, it, is, uh, it is spitfish yeah, yeah spitfish and and basically that's a compressor and an equalizer combined so what happens right. is when it hears something that's in that the 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 sibilant range that you set it to it turns it down for you automatically but i i, I usually end up just Using a graphic EQ, just like Dan said, or a parametric EQ, parametric, and I just yeah. go in and I find, I keep playing around. What I do to isolate a, a sibilant frequency or any frequency that I'm trying to sort of find, you know, where it is in the in the band, is what I'll do is I'll boost the frequency first. I'll kick it way up until that that frequency just jumps out and hits me in the Absolutely. face. Absolutely. I go, oh, there it is, and then there I'll, it is. Then I'll cut it. Right. Um, that's what works pretty well for me, but you could try the same thing. And, you know, as always, if you don't trust your ears, uh, you know, of course that's a big part of it and you don't really know for sure, you know, get someone else, an engineer, a third party person to listen to the sample like Dan and I, or anybody <laughs> that you can, can trust and, uh, have them help you dial that in. Cause we can yeah. do that just by sending you, sending us a file, tweaking it and then sending it back and saying, here's the EQ setting we found that seems to work. Yeah. for you. I've, yeah, I've actually been thinking about setting up a part in my website calling it the specimen cup. <laughs> <laughs> People can send me their audio, put it in the specimen cup. <laughs> <Like that. laughs> Maybe we should have an eweb specimen cup for bad audio of the week or something <laughs> along those lines. Anyway, so <laughs> sibilance is you know, it again, it's it, it's it's all of those things and you try until you find what works. Uh, a cheap microphone is going to give you more sibilance than a, you know, than a, than a, you know, a better, a better cost, uh, microphone. So I generally find it to be true. Yeah. Uh, another, another one last technique idea, uh, for mic positioning is, you know, you were saying about, you were mentioning mic positioning earlier, basically addressing the mic off axis, you know, t- mm-hmm. to the side, yeah. from the side. So like, uh, let me grab. Right we'll here. just sit here and wait. It's okay. right here. <laughs> my uh trusty audio technica 3035 condenser mm-hmm. if you address it directly like this that is the sweet spot of the microphone but it's Hello, also microphone. the 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 area where it's going to be the most sensitive to trouble mm-hmm. so as you start rotating the microphone to the side like this well away from you the microphone starts to be less and less sensitive to sibilance or it gets less it's less and less bright sounding Right. And conversely, it sounds more dull. So you can find a position here where once you've turned it just to the right amount, it it will start to attenuate or turn down that sibilant range in your voice. 
And sometimes you'll just find a sweet spot where if I talk into the mic right here at like 35 or 40 degrees off axis, it sounds perfect. Right. And, and so if you're holding it, technique. If you're, right. And if you're that close to the mic, you're too close to the mic anyway. Yeah. So, and that, and that might be another cause of it too, with a lot of people. Yeah. Being too close can, could be, a, can not only create proximity effect, you know, bass buildup, but also sibilance. So give yourself some air on the mic. You should be, you know, at least say six inches, eight inches to, if you're doing something more with higher energy up to a foot away. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, we have our special guests coming up in just a couple of minutes here. So we want you to stay tuned for that. That's going to be Penny Absher and James Alberger from Voice. And we're going to talk about Voice 2012. And we've got Bad Audio of the Week coming up. And again, we maybe we'll answer a couple more questions. Lots more coming our way here on East West Audio Body Shop. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Services. Randy Thomas chiming in. This is Alex Verdi. Hi, this is Bill Ratner in Los Angeles. Hi, this is Scott Rummel here in Yorba Linda, California. Hi, my name is Rick Wasserman. Hi, this is Tom Kane. Hi, my name is Vanessa Marshall. Hi, my name is Zurich. Hi, I'm Mary McKittrick. Hi, I'm Peter McHugh. I was turned on to George by none other than Don LaFontaine, who always swore by his help. George is absolutely awesome. ISDN, Source Connect, Phone Patch, FTP, you name it, George has set it up. It's really the best thing I've ever done for myself. I feel free, safe, fearless like anything is possible in here. Unless you like to look for opportunities to waste time, call George. And he did all of that, long distance over the phone and the internet. I'm very happy with George and uh, I cherish I've got my travel kit. I got my Source Connect. I've got it all going on, thanks to you. Thanks, George. You make it easy. And we're back here at East West Audio Body Shop. And, uh, well, we're, we're trying to get the video feed for our guests here, but we do have their audio. So we'd like to welcome to East West Audio Body Shop our very good friends, Penny Absher and James Alberger. Hey, kids, how you doing today? Hey, great. We're thanks doing for, great. How are you, kids? Thanks for inviting oh, us. Oh, we're, we're just wonderful. Just wonderful. And thanks for coming on our show tonight. Oh, um, our honor. Well, and we're always thrilled to talk to you anyway, even if you weren't on the show. <laughs> but, uh, but right now we, you know, we want to talk about, about voice, but, uh, also I, I think a lot of people are interested. How did you guys first team up and start, uh, teaching voice acting together? I'm sure it's a long story, but yeah, we, <laughs> we got 15, 20 minutes. I... 
Hey, we give, have give us the Reader's Digest here. version. Video is creeping in. Oh, now we've lost audio. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you oh, can hear us. Are well, you there? We'll just talk. Hopefully yeah, we'll, you can hear. Can you hear us? Nod your head if you can hear us. Yes. I, okay. okay. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> well, all nod. Looks like my picture has frozen though. So, oh well. Don't um, trust what we you actually, guys see. <laughs> I, well, I was, as, as most of you know, I was in television for about 25 years with NBC here in San Diego. And during that time, working with voice talent on a daily basis. And around 1997, I started teaching a learning annex class here in San Diego, kind of an introduction to voiceover. And Penny ended up taking one of those classes with me. And uh, Penny, you, you take it from there. Well, it was the first year you taught, wasn't right. it? And it was in Oct about this time of the year, actually, in 1997. And uh, I was working as a paralegal at the time. And a friend of mine said, let's go take this class, this How to Make Money in VoiceOver by this Allberger character. Let's, you know, let's go take the class. <laughs> and I said, no, don't want to. And he said, oh, come on. It'll be fun. You don't have anything to lose. Let's go take the class. It's not expensive. I said, no, I don't want to go. So he badgered me into going to this class, which honestly is the best thing that ever happened to me because I went to this little three-hour class, uh, not even knowing what voiceover really was, and walked out knowing that that's what I would do with the rest of my life. It was, if it's possible to have an epiphany, I had an epiphany. I knew that was it. So I, I hope you're hearing this. We hear everything you're oh, okay, saying. you're hearing. Okay. <laughs> So I just started taking uh, more classes with Jim because he started teaching uh, the eight-week workshops around that time. Actually, it was about a year later. Uh, I started taking the workshops from him and then took another workshop and then took another workshop um, so that eventually I think that the reason he made me his teaching partner was because he couldn't get rid of me. <laughs> but it has been a very good partnership. We just found, you know, some people are very lucky in their lives to find that person they can really relate to and on a, you know, in business matters and really be successful with. And I was very, very fortunate to find Jim because that's something we do have. Oh, okay. So that's how we, how we connected, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right. Is my audio working there, George? Yeah. Everything sounds oh, okay. great here. Okay. Can you guys hear me now? Uh -huh. I, I can actually, yes, I can. We can. Well, yes. Okay. All right. Well, now I figured out why I can't get your video. James, you have your privacy settings set wrong. Oh, I do. <gasps> oh. Oh. Yeah. oh. <laughs> James Alberger can't be added to this conversation due to his or her privacy settings. Oh, You're right. Is that in oh. tools? Probably. It's in options. Yeah. See, now, see, this is how we solve things on eWebs. It's part privacy. of the charm of our show. That's anyway. Right. That's right. But while, while James is trying to fix that, maybe we can get into that. Uh, uh now I was at, I, yes, yeah. I was at the first voice conference in Vegas. Uh -huh. What was the, what was the genesis for that? Because <laughs> it was such a fabulous time. Yeah, it really was. You know, it's interesting if you remember any of you the R Gang comedies. Remember mm -hmm. those? Oh yeah, where they all got together and they said, "Let's put on a show." I've got a barn, and we'll have Susie make the costume. <laughs> That's what Voice Two Thousand Seven was truly. Uh, we got the idea to do that. I'd had, it'd been rattling around in my head for a long time, but in uh, in the end of the well, actually, it was about this time of the year in two thousand six. We connected up with Frank Frederick, and we just there again. We just started talking about it. It kind of took on a life of its own, and we said, "Well, what the heck? Why not? You know, why don't we put on it? Even plumbers have conventions for crying out loud. Why don't we?" And I wanted to meet all those people that I talk to all the time on, you know, the internet. I wanted to actually be able to see them face to face. And a lot of other people seem to want to do that too. So we just said, okay, we got a hotel, we sent out the invitations and about 140 people showed up. Mm -hmm. it we was, sure did. And yeah. it was so yeah. amazing because it was just, I, I've often referred to that as the charmed voice because everything, we had a few little glitches, but it was just Everything fell into place. Uh, yeah. The first night that we walked into the room, and I know you'll remember this, it was just electric. It was with magic. With the excitement of people. It really was magical. Mm -hmm. It was. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 th the thing was, I remember walking into the, into, the, into the room, and suddenly there we are, a bunch of 140 you know, voice artists, and there are people there who I physically knew, but mostly uh -huh. people I knew on the internet. Right. Mm -hmm. And But 
we were like so amazed to meet each other and actually, <laughs> you know, for see each other face to face. And the fact of the matter is, is you're right, Penny. The the party hasn't stopped since. No, it hasn't. No, it hasn't. No. So, oh. uh, but, 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 I thought maybe I'd lost you, but I think it's just the delay. It's just a little delay. So okay. you don't, have to, don't have to be watching that. I'm <laughs> covering my face again, George. But anyway, um, <laughs> So, 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 James, what's your background in, in, in voiceover? So then we can sort of drift into the really important meet here. How did you get into it? <laughs> well, I, I came into voiceover through the back door, through 25 years as an audio producer and director with NBC in San Diego, mm -hmm. working with voice talent every single day of that 25 years. I uh, picked up 11 Emmys for audio production and sound design along the way, so somebody thought I knew what I was doing, <laughs> which is always encouraging. <laughs> Right. And uh, around 1997, uh, I took a voiceover class. It was there was the Learning Annex class that I actually ended up teaching. I took that class. It was canceled twice because the instructor had to come down from L.A. So third time was a charm. I took the class. And after on leaving that class, I was with a friend of mine, and we looked at each other, and she looked back at me and said, you could teach this class better than that teacher. And I said, yeah, I could. So... At that point, I started pursuing what it would take to start a learning annex class. A month later in June, June 13th to be precise of 97, uh, I got a phone call, uh, or actually I taught my first learning annex class because I had a friend at learning annex who was in a panic because the instructor for the audio of the voiceover class could not be found. They had a change of location. Uh -huh. And would I do the class as a, a substitute? And I said, sure, of course I would. So I did, and by Monday, the other teacher was fired. I was taken on, hired full-time to do that learning annex class every month, and I did that for more than 10 years. Ah, and, all right. Uh, yeah, and so, but that kind of got me more into voiceover, and when I decided to do that learning annex class, I decided, if I'm going to do this right, I'm going to provide notes. I want people to know what they're getting and what, you know, take something with them. So the notes turned into my book the first edition, which came out a year later in September or November of 98. And uh, it's just been going since then. I left NBC in 1998, two months before the book came out, and I've been never a, looked back. Huh? a professional voice talent, audio <laughs> producer, uh, technical consultant, much like you guys. I do the same sort of thing. Uh, but, you know, I've been doing that ever since I left in, in, in 1998. Oh, and then guys, in, uh, yeah. 2007, yeah, guys, of course, we started producing voice. Right. You guys were absolute pioneers in this business because you were, you were some of the first to really have, you know, really starting to, to market and, and, and start to teach to the online community and mm -hmm. help to create the community that exists today. And I think that's, that, that will always be a feather in your cap and we always, will always appreciate that, especially that, well, you. you know, the first, the first voice conference that was just so much fun. Plus I didn't oh, really yeah. want the slot machines that weekend. So, <laughs> <laughs> and you've been to all the voice conventions, haven't you, Dan? I have not missed a one, nor yeah. have I missed a second. Yeah. Of course, there was the year I was staff at one. That was that was lots of fun. But actually, we had, oh, yeah. some, we had lots of team building stuff that went on with that. And that was actually oh, sure, a sure. experience. Yeah. Well, I and think that's, so. how, that's how George and I met. Actually, well, the time of Voice twenty two thousand seven, because Dan was saying, "Weren't you uh, at two thousand seven? I was still, uh, you know, very much below the radar. I mean, I was just, you know, <laughs> doing my thing, working with voice actors here and there, but I really hadn't started marketing or networking or or anything. So I was, you know, still you know, like I said, kind of invisible. And then 2008 mm -hmm. came along and um, I can't remember if you guys came to me first or if I came to you, but it was sort of a very last minute thing. Someone else had to drop out and you mm -hmm. asked me if I wanted to jump in. And I think I had a month to put together a... And thank a, goodness mm -hmm. you said yes. A, a program. <laughs> I had a month to put together the program and, and you're like, well, all this stuff was due a few months ago, but if you can get it in as soon as possible, that'd be great. And I was right. like, oh my God. <laughs> but, uh, it was a great program uh, it, was, oh, yeah. it was fun that was my totally my breaking into doing any kind of live speaking um, and uh, I guess I pulled it off because I still do it oh, from yeah. time to time and I'm, I'm going to be back for the next one I hope oh, if you guys you, are impressed you were, had great reviews you, yeah, you and Dan yeah. both Thank for the you. things that you have taught at Voice you know that's an interesting thing about Voice too is some of the the really amazing contacts that you make there yeah. Um, I mean, when I really look back and think of the people that I know now, having met them at Voice, 
Uh, in fact, last year, we were sitting having dinner before Voice started, 2010, mm-hmm. with dinner with our friends from Istanbul and Australia. Oh, Andy, yeah. Now, you mm-hmm. know, in 2007, I never had any idea that people from outside the U.S. would even know who I was. And here I have dear friends that are sitting at the dinner table with me. It just, it's amazing the kinds of contacts that can be made. It yeah. is amazing. I, every, and, and every there's some, you go to. Yeah, there yeah. are some amazing stories that have oh, come out yeah. of, of the people who have been at Voice. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's going to be a video going up on the voiceconvention.com website within the next couple of days that everybody that's on this call you tonight check it this, out. you're going to want to go in and check it out. Yeah, about something really special that happened at 2010. Yes. Oh, so awesome. Well, we're I'm going to save that for the video. There's a lot of good reasons to be there, especially yeah. if you're learning learning about voiceover and you want to be a sponge and soak it all up. What are some of the reasons for voice actors who really, you know, maybe they've got five to 10 years in it, into it mm-hmm. or more. And, uh, you know, maybe they don't have a whole lot that they feel they need to, to learn, mm-hmm. but what would be a still, what would be it's still a very, reason? That's, a very, that's a very good question. Mm-hmm. And as we know, you were at that's voiceover last week. Yeah. And as we were, as were we, and I thought there was a very, a very keen observation from Bo Weaver on one of the panels. It's Bo. Because that keen. question came mm-hmm. up during that uh, during that voiceover, mm-hmm. and it was you know well why should I get training and well and Bo Weaver's response was, you can't teach yourself something you don't already know, <laughs> which means you the the business of voiceover is constantly changing. There mm-hmm. there are, the trends are shifting. It's we're in flux. Yeah. This is showbiz and showbiz. That's right. Changes. It changes constantly. Mm-hmm. And in, in terms of advertising and marketing, which is a huge part of what we do as voice talent, we provide the voice for those things. Those trends and processes are constantly changing. So for somebody to sit back in the comfort of their home studio and think they know it all, mm. even if they've been doing voiceover for 20 years, there's a really good chance they're missing something and that there's a technique, a tip a marketing connection, a mm-hmm. networking connection, somebody they could meet. Right. You know, any of those things could happen well, and have happened at yeah. voice. And all those things being said, too, sometimes we just need a shot in the arm. I mean, yeah. if you think about the way most voiceover is done, it's it's in your, <clears throat> pardon me, it's in your closet in your house. And, you know, how much contact do you have with the outside world? Even if you're a professional, you don't mm-hmm. get to you talk to people on the phone all the time. But it's a little isolating. It's so a, yeah. I think one of the things mm-hmm. about voice is it gives us the opportunity to have that personal contact. That's why community is very important. That's why we give a community award. It's about the people. It's about the training, yes, but it's very much about the people. Absolutely is. Now, this year, well, not this year, next year, next technically, year. you're going to Disneyland. We're all yeah. going to go to Disneyland. Yes. Why, That's why I'm, Disneyland? I'm wearing the ears. He's got his Mickey Mouse ears on. <laughs> All right, good. Why Disneyland? And and, because that's certainly it's convenient for me. My mom lives around the corner from there. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we had great experience at the Hyatt Regency Century Plaza. They were wonderful to us, and it's a beautiful facility. There were a few drawbacks um, because it's kind of in the middle of a, a financial area. It's not really, you know, a lot of things around it, so it wasn't convenient for quick food and that kind of thing. So we thought, well, we try something else. Disneyland was one of those other things. We find things happen so serendipitously. Serendipitously? That's, a that's how you say that. Serendipitously. Uh, where voice is concerned is it just uh, our sales manager or is executive sales manager or wonderful great guy, because we love him, Kurt Bike, uh, happened to be at a trade show. And he met a meeting planner for Disneyland. Mm-hmm. And she said, we should talk. And I have to tell you, first I thought, oh, there's no way we could ever do Disneyland. It's probably going to be way too expensive. Guess what? It isn't any more expensive than what we've been doing. And my gosh, there's so much. Oh, you guys, I'm so excited because there's just Uh so much for people to do and see. And they can spend time with their families if they want to, you know, make it a vacation. Because this year we're making it um, lots more free time. It's four days this year, next year. It's four days. So you've got time. Time in the evenings, we're going to make time in the day so that you can go and enjoy the park, too, if you decide to bring your mm-hmm. family with you. So um, 
I think that's a great I'm, I'm idea. I'm just incredibly excited about Disneyland and the whole Disneyland connection. We're hoping that we can get some Disney people. Yeah. Wow. We have some oh, things wow. we're working on that we can't reveal just yet. Oh, no. There are we can't. You know we surprises can't. Surprises <laughs> to reveal. Right. Well, yes, yes, we have surprises. Really we nice. always have a surprise. But, you know, what did you, how, what'd you think of the surprise <laughs> at Boys 2007? Yeah. You know, to have Don LaFontaine as our... As our yeah. future guest, oh, uh, that was my. a once in a lifetime event. It was, it was, it was inspiring. It was. I oh, still yeah. have the picture of he. Oh, he yeah. stood in line for over an hour taking yeah. a picture of everybody individually who was at that thing. Well, and that's the kind yeah, of guy. And what he was, was cool about that too is he didn't just take a picture with them. He actually talked to everybody. Oh, absolutely. Oh, jeez. You no, know, he yeah. took the time to talk to every single person. It was phenomenal, yeah. as he right. was. And it, it was ironic too, because I remember somebody asking, you know, Mr. LaFontaine, is it possible for, do you think there's anybody in this room that could, you know, possibly do what you do? And he went, yes, when I die. <laughs> yeah. Hi, highly ir- ironic. But, I know. Yeah, uh, it sure was. Yeah. But he, he was a funny guy. He had a great sense of humor about what he did. And, uh, and that was, that was so special that he was there. I mean, there was rumor that he was coming, but. We're all like, wow, he's actually here. So that was, yeah. that was worth it. it and was, then when Brad Garrett wandered in last year, that was also a lot of fun, Oh, yeah, too. and June Foray up on stage. Oh, my I yes. Th- oh. Wow. I almost June stepped Foray. on her in the lobby. I mean, yeah. literally. I mean, I, I didn't know who she was. And there was this yeah. little tiny lady, like, mm-hmm. less than five feet tall. And somebody yeah. almost, someone almost cross-blocked me because I almost stepped on her. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was like, whoa, who's that? And then, you know, of course, five minutes later, she's walking on the stage. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I almost, yeah. crushed, yeah. I almost yeah. crushed the squirrel. Right. And I got she to was, meet. She was yeah. so sweet to want to come to the event. And she said, when I talked to her on the telephone, which was surreal for me, here I'm talking to June Foray on the phone. She said, well, you know, dear, would it be okay <laughs> if I bring a date? Well, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was just a kick. I, I just love her. Yeah. Yeah. And I got to meet. Dick Orkin, oh, my, you know, yeah. my, you know, who was my hero for years and years and years. And just to be able to come up to him and say, you know, you really were my hero. And, you know, and I remember Chicken Man and, and uh-huh. he was he was touched by it. It was kind of cool, you know, but every yeah. time I think of him, I just think of a door opening or closing. Uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, <I> so <laughs> so this new now. Now, what are the dates for for voice this year? It's, or, it's or June. 13th through 16th. That's a Wednesday through Saturday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we have our red carpet reception on Tuesday evening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we have, we know, we already know people are coming in on the preceding Saturday and they'll spend some time through the park and doing Disneyland and spending time in Southern California with their families so and maybe go, going back home on Sunday. We do have special rates on the hotel too. Is it three days before and three after? Three days before, three after. So they get the same rate that they will if, if they're coming for the conference. It's a so. very deep discount on the hotel. Yes, it is. And we also have a great price on park tickets. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. I, I, I think it's great that you guys are opening up the schedule a little bit, allowing some yes. more downtime here and there for people. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, the networking seems to be the most valuable thing to people. <sighs> Absolutely. So, they Absolutely. need the time to do that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, and, and I think the people need to learn that you know it's it's sending out demos, it's doing all those things, but networking seems to be oh, probably yeah. one of the most powerful things you can do in this business. Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely true. And yeah. and I think that and, and another feather in your cap for getting this going to help to help you know for that going. I mean, George and I met at Voice. We yeah, did. yeah, and yeah exactly. And wait until you see the video that goes up. <laughs> Probably tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. going to love it. It's Lots great. of people oh. met. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wonderful some things can happen. Some great stories. Some great stories. I, I, well, I have a feeling I know what it's about. But Yeah. Anyway. So, Don't all right, tell. So, Don't tell. Right. I, 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 won't, I wasn't going to say anything. I really wasn't. Uh, so <laughs> so uh, if they want to register for voice or get more information, where is the web address and where do they go? The Real web, simple. The website is voiceconvention.com. That's easy to remember. Oh, come on now. Voiceconvention.com. <laughs> yeah, it's that easy. Voiceconvention.com. You got it. And everything is there. And anybody that has any questions can always feel free to give us a call. Our contact information is there as well. We'll have that on the show notes for everybody so nobody forgets. That's right. Excellent. Guys, it's always a pleasure to be around you guys and because uh, you guys just have such great energy. And oh, thank again, you. thank you for, for really really being the genesis for the, the real start of this community uh, in the voiceover awesome. business and, and oh, for starting voice. Thanks for being with us tonight. You're welcome. Well, thank you, thank you so much. It's been fun. All righty.
Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, James and Penny. Boy, they, they did so much for this industry, and I, I don't think I can thank them enough. I mean, personally, it had a big impact on my career, and and certainly, you know, it helped you too. Uh, you know, exposed us to so many more oh, yeah. people and 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 stuff. So that was oh, yeah. that was great. Anyway, well, we've got bad audio of the week coming up. So why don't you stay tuned for that? And we'll be right back after this. Extra, the voiceover industry's online news, education, and resource center 24-7. Hundreds, probably thousands of free how-to articles for voiceover success, ranging from home studio to voice acting to business. A free voiceover industry directory, calendar of industry events, resource links, a store, and much more. Bi-monthly webinars on all topics of voiceover, free subscriptions to newsletters, reports, announcements, daily news, and features at voiceoverextra.com. VoiceOver Extra, the voiceover industry's online news, education, and resource center 24-7. Hundreds, probably thousands of free how-to articles for voiceover success, ranging from home studio to voice acting to business. A free voiceover industry directory, calendar of industry events, resource links, a store, and much more. Bi-monthly webinars on all topics of voiceover, free subscriptions to... And we're back here at East West Audio Body Shop. Okay, yeah, we're chummy with them. They're our friends. But if it wasn't for them, this show wouldn't exist. It's absolutely true. And we, we owe a lot to those guys. Absolutely. And there's somebody else we owe a lot to because he's the one that has all the stuff you need. George and I are always saying, keep it simple when it comes to your home studio. And in order to keep it simple, you need to have the right equipment. And you don't want to spend an arm and a leg with, uh, you know, for it. And you don't necessarily want to have a choice of billions of things. You want to have, you know, the opportunity to shop around, but if you you're really right choices, you want the right choices. Somebody who knows what they're doing has already made these choices for you. So it's real easy for you. And that guy is our great friend, Harlan Hogan and his website voice over essentials.com. I knew I was going to remember it there. You know, the old brain starts to go out of gear every now and again, <laughs> Voiceoveressentials.com, where you can find all sorts of stuff. He's got, you know, he's got, uh, you know, he's got his signature microphone, the VO one a, which we continually praise. He's got, you can get a mic port pro there. You can get other microphones. You can get the Porta booth pro two which I believe he now has in stock and his books, his, you know, all sorts of other things, uh, the, this rack that you can put the, uh, you know, the, uh, the Porta booth pro two on, uh, so it can actually be part of your regular studio, uh, without having to go hog wild. Yeah. Um, there's still certain things you have to do, but Harlan's got it all there. If you go to voiceoveressentials.com and you, if you need it, he's got it. Or as they say on, uh, on Prairie Home Companion, if he doesn't have it, you probably don't need it. Well put. Well put. <laughs> Excellent. And talking about good audio and how to get it, I think it's time for our regular segment of Bad Audio of the Week. What do we got this week, George? Well, let's see what we got here. Let's get the bumper. Episode of Bad Audio of the Week. Week. Almost a U-shaped corner, which is approximately th three feet wide, I would say. Uh, just trying to check balances, and I have a setting for wide voiceover on uh, 
as a channel strip setting in Logic. All right, now, George, we're recording with the Octava MC012 mic with a uh, blue pop filter. Uh, we're approximately six inches from that, more or less straight on to it. And about four This one's a really subtle one because um, it, it's a stereo effect. So, you know, if you guys are uh, watching okay. the feed in, with headphones on, if you're, if you're just watching through your computer speakers, you're probably not going to hear it. But um, this is just a case of, you know, having the best intentions, but laying it on, laying on too many effects. So the, he had some plug-in called Voice Wide or something like that that he dropped oh, on. Geez. Oh, jeez. Oh, cripes. It, it's, it's supposed to take mono and then make it sound oh, stereo. Fuck. But this particular effect, what it was doing was panning it slowly back and forth, left to right. And it was yeah. really bizarre. I mean, it was really strange. Yeah. Don't overdo it with effects. Yeah, and the thing is, is don't overdo, you know, don't do overdo the effects on the front end. Remember, once you put it in there, it's there forever. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, on the so, front end, meaning if, at the preamp end, if you have a preamp and a compressor all plugged in together, once you add something on the front end like that, it's nearly impossible to 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 get rid of it. But even when you're doing auditions, um, the only effects I ever recommend using are just things to um make the recording just kind of punch up a little bit but never do anything that adds reverberation echo ambience anything that adds to the acoustical space around the recording that's a no-no i i think i mean there may be an occasion where you can get creative but unless you know what you're doing just give it to them straight they want it clean they want you they want you unadulterated natural and uh, with no distractions. That's right. So don't get all of that equipment. I think people get confused sometimes, you know, when they, you know, if, if they're, they've been voice actors for a long time and they're maybe new to having a home studio, their idea of what a home studio is, is what they've always been working in, which is, you know, a nice place with nice furniture and the big glass window and the engineer and the big mixer board and all that stuff. And it's simple. It's all you really need to do is get your voice on your hard drive as clean as possible in as clean a room as possible. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, you do have to vacuum it up once in a while too. I'm, I'm like here, uh, but, uh, you, you want to have a good clean signal, all mm -hmm. that processing, all those racks of equipment that you saw all those engineers have, you don't need them as a voice actor. You don't want to concern yourself with that kind of stuff. I mean, that's got to be the, one of the biggest things that you and I probably deal with is everybody's like, well, I got to have one of these. I got to have one of those. It's like, why? One of my favorite things, like I've said before, is to go into a studio that has all that stuff start and pulling start all the pulling stuff out. out. <laughs> yanking out cords and yanking out gear, you know? As, as you hear them gasping, what are you doing? Exactly. <laughs> Anyway, well, that's going to bring it to an end to our show for this week. <laughs> there, there was one question, though. I think that I, I think we're going to definitely have to do that one of these weeks. Somebody was asking, how do you do this show? How do you make it look so effortless? <laughs> yeah. How is it there's, there's great video? How is it that we're, we're split screen like this? And, and, you know, I'm here in my basement in Buffalo and you're in your, your, your mansion out there in, in Santa Monica. And, uh, how is it that we're able to do this? Uh, <laughs> it's you're the one in home. A, you're the one in a freaking mansion. Man, yeah, man. really. Uh, how is it that we do this? I think it may be time for us to maybe you know, you go a little bit behind the, behind scenes, the scenes with how we do this. Yeah, yeah. And show the Hydra. Okay. I'll have to clean up a little bit. I won't clean just, up the just desk a little too bit. much. Just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. So I don't know who our guest is next week. We're still working on these things. You know, it's, you know, it goes week to week. We'll figure it out and we will let you know. And we thank you for being with us yeah. without this show, without you, we wouldn't have a show. Yeah. You guys I are mean, the engine on. that drive this thing, man. That's right. Totally. And you, yeah, the, you, you in the chat room, giving us things to bounce off of, you know, questions for the, for our call, for our guests. Um, the, the call in voicemails, you know, uh, any content you can help provide, you know, you, you're helping us provide content. That's so, right. uh, and if you have suggestions too, on how we could pr improve the show, whether it be from production value standpoint, content, should we make, should we make the show two hours long? Should, should we make the show 
30 minutes, you know, two uh, hours long. You know what my wife would say if we did that? Yeah, tell me about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know what your wife would say too. <laughs> yeah. Should we change the form? I mean, you know, this is just, we're just going for it. So, you know, we love your suggestions. Uh, you can send us email at ewabshop at gmail.com. Gmail and yeah. the phone number again in New Jersey? It's uh, 818-47-EWABS. Yeah, you, you wrote it down, didn't you? 473-9227. There you go. Good job. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. And uh, we want your questions. Tune in. I'm Dan Leonard in the East. I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are. East West Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. And almost synced it there. Anyway, have yourself a great week. We'll see you next Sunday night. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.